Rolling. Okay, good evening everyone. My name is Byron Ziegler. I'm here to talk about Open Works. Um, it's not going to be anything about Oliver Twist or any. Uh, the definition of an Open Work under the uh, proposal is that um, these are creative works which are protected by copyright, but the owner cannot be determined, located, or identified. Um, and they give a variety of examples. But the main idea is that uh, these are works which are ostensibly protected by copyright, but people can't determine who the copyright owner is. And as a result, they don't have easy access to use of these works. Um, it is not presently dealt with under the current Copyright Act. And so any usage of uh, any orphan work uh, will be deemed to be infringement. Uh, the Ministry of Law has felt that it is an impediment to risk averse users using the work because it reduces usage and access to creative works where they are concerned about the possibility of infringement. And it also discourages the creation of new works incorporating older orphan works. So what's being proposed now is a potential structure to deal with orphan works in Singapore. And uh, to guide this uh, decision, uh, they've raised a few possible positions that Singapore could adopt one of which is um, using the US model, where potential users must try to locate or reach copyright owner, the copyright owner for usage permission, and in the event of failure, they can go ahead and use the orphan work, subject to registration on an orphan works registry uh, administered by the government. So in Singapore's case, ostensibly it would be high cost. And if the owner subsequently emerges, then the owner can bring an action uh, against the user whereupon the court or tribunal will determine the reasonable license fee payable by the user. So that's the US model they've described. Then they've also highlighted the uh, UK model, where it proceeds along the same lines. Potential users must try and locate and reach the copyright owner for usage permission. And if they fail to do so, they can apply to the government for permission to use, uh, subject to, again, registration of use on an orphan works registry. And then the government determines the reasonable license fee payable and will, contact, uh, will collect the same for disbursement to the owner if they emerge subsequently. So this model is payment at the point of usage, essentially. And then the proposal also highlights a third possibility, which is a modified version of the UK model, uh, where potential users must again try to locate or reach the copyright owner for usage permission and if they fail, they can apply to the government for permission to use, subject again to registration of use on an orphan works registry. But at that, under this third uh, position, the government will determine the reasonable license fee payable and the owner collects the same from the user if the owner emerges subsequently, i.e. payment happens at the point of the owner's claim. So those are the three different uh, models that uh, Ming Law has, has raised, uh, leading us to the first question, which of the three options do you view as the most desirable and why? Um, but I gather, you know, this is which of the three is it? Is it an assumption that we are going to put in yeah, some, some mechanism, mechanism, right? Yeah. <coughs> so would that mechanism be limited to the copyright registry in the first instance? It could be. I thought about that. Um, what I felt was that the copyright registry seemed to be a much larger structure, whereas an orphan works registry is actually much smaller. It only emerges or it only arises where there are orphan works, and so you know, yeah. So it, it, it's actually a much more limited uh, beast, as it were. So I don't but think I, it has the same. But, but then the question would be if if the copyright registry doesn't come into existence, mm -hmm. then setting this up will be. Yeah, it's a small exercise and mm. it's a cost issue. The copyright registry will be able to identify the owner because the owner is the same. No, but that's if I have all problems with it. Yeah, correct. Yeah, but it's too small. This one is an orphan registry. Mm -hmm. Only when the works okay, want yeah, to be yeah. used, ah, okay. and then you can identify the owner. So, yeah. but that question that sort of back to is how do I, how much due diligence do I go through to ensure that I couldn't find it, couldn't find the person? What what am I supposed to do ah, that I couldn't right. find you? Okay, so that's the, the second part. Oh, uh, yeah. So the first the first question really deals with which structure do you prefer. Then after that, we talk, start talking about the mechanics of the 
I prefer the structure to retain this one. Fair enough. Because if, if the owner cannot be identified, it will be that you'll never be identified. <laughs> and if you'll never be identified, then I think that you know that coding you know, giving that money to somebody only for it not to be paid gives you a lot more issues and financial financial regret. So you can't find the person and you go to the <coughs> registry yeah. register and get permission there. Mm -hmm. And then to be triggered when the person shows up. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say before this person shows up, you disappear. Then yeah, what happens? Too bad. So the guy who showed up now has to go and find you, and you can't. He can't be found. Often or wrong. So I'm talking. I'm, I'm thinking like a software guy, right? So. Often. So. So I'm looking at the modern cases of people who have disappeared. If they disappeared in the first place. Well, I think that they, I think what's extraordinary is they, they try this because they had a lot of problems with the people doing work for the 50 years oh. in Singapore. And oh. they have a lot of work that they were willing to put in the, the archive. all these collections, the archives and everything, so, and they couldn't find them. Oh. So it was a, a real problem to do something so. Because there is a lot of material that can be used, but not because mm. um, they don't have these permissions. And this is what they use. So today. if you put a permission, these are the permissions that pro they propose to you. So we could propose one something else as well. Sure. Right. Mm. Yeah. If I may, I would I favor the third option, uh, mm -hmm. where the, the payment that I have to make up front as a user is is in order. So I say, from my, right, right. yeah, as a viewpoint of work for my, uh, I used to work for National Army Board, so it's like a clinic in this afternoon. <laughs> and also now it's a media production house for me. Because if I know how much I have to pay now, I can make a choice. Mm -hmm. How much I budget mm -hmm. for oh, right. mm -hmm. Rather than, mm -hmm. oh, I don't know in future whether this owner will come up and charge me exorbitant amount. Then I'd rather mm -hmm. not. Reasonable fee. You can check it so you know. Yeah, for what is reasonable. So, so <coughs> if the fee is not certain, mm -hmm. I would definitely not use it. Mm -hmm. Go from, you know, from. But definitely pay later only, lah. You don't pay that to someone. No, else. when you pay later, how much do I pay? That's the issue. So, so no, no, but you're, 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 you are putting the pay later. No, no. Uh, option yes. three means pay now. No, no option no, three is you know the fee, but you only pay when oh, it's right, certain. Uh, uh, okay, option, okay, options two and three, the government determines the fee. Already at uh, the point in time when you have to pay for the registration, right? But you pay earlier for option two and you pay later for option three. Sorry about that. Uh, you so may not be mm, yeah, exactly pay option three. Yeah. So, the guy yeah. so, actually, I'm in favor of knowing how much to pay and pay now. Um, pay oh, now. Okay. Option three. This is option two. Huh? Yeah, so that's option three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 ah, I would like a digital payment. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Oh. Yeah, because there's no guarantee that you'll be cashed. So the money will. Yeah, because what happens? They're silent. They don't claim the money. It goes away. So goes away. Consolidated funds. Consolidated funds. So giving money to government for. For no valid reason. Well, it's also a practical reason why I do it now. Because if I. Even if I'm a private sector company, if I if I've been reserved this sum indefinitely. Yeah. Well, no, you don't. You don't. You don't. Seven, seven years or whatever. Right? That's it. Seven, seven years. Your book for seven years. I think seven months is actually too long because my cash flow has to take into account mm -hmm. uh, uncertainty. So, so, so the point is, yeah, yeah. The point is, if I'm not certain, I will not always mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. Which means I'm excluded right. from using the book. You're extremely responsible. <laughs> so, there are many businesses which uh, sure. spend money yeah. without maybe because my cash flow is tight. But with the third yeah. option, is it, uh, is, it, is it possible for you to voluntarily pay first so that it could resolve the issue? Yeah. And then the people who don't want to pay first can then pay and make. Can there be something in the middle? Or we could solve uh, Ivan's problem by you can actually have an escrow account that you pay into the escrow account. Yeah. Yeah. He, can, he, can have, he can have his own personal like escrow account, which then. But then you can't touch the money. Yeah, you can't touch the money, but. The point is, it's more of a cash flow issue from an SME perspective, right? So now if the money is locked away, take it that you take it that you have to spend that money into your escrow account, but after you trigger off the certain number of years, pom, it's going to fall to you. <laughs> 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 it's a good idea. <laughs> 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 
It's like Christmas. Yeah, it's like Christmas, right? Who got money back from your COE? Anybody? <laughs> So what let's take a vote. Okay, all those for option, could you read out the option? Sure, one? sure. Just rehashing. So option one is the US model, which is you only pay when you're sued. When you're sued, essentially. When yeah. someone claims that they're and, yeah. you know, and then the court, uh, the tribunal will determine at the point in time of the claim. Uh, option two is the UK model, where you pay at the outset, uh, at the point in time when you want to use the copyright. And then option three is um, you get a determination of the price initially, but you pay later when the person comes forward. Australian model. Uh, UK, UK modified. Okay. So I think it's a Singapore invention. Okay, so all those in favor of. So one, two, or three, right? Option one. All those in. Wow, so many. <laughs> all those in favor of option two. One. Okay. All those in favor of option three. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <one don't> <laughs> okay. <laughs> option three. Please help to state whether you're potentially a copyright owner or copyright user. <laughs> we're, we're all thinking from the viewpoint of users, right? Minimally, yes. we are all users, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Users. Yeah. User. Will it change how you deal with the current the Issue of often works. Yes, we'll happily use it. We'll happily use it. Mm -hmm. Take it to the yes, we will happily use often works now and pay later. I wonder how the government is going to handle that kind of thing. Copyright tribunal. Which like handles one thing to one thing. Yeah, but it's okay, you know, like cover songs, right? This doing cover songs as opposed to leaflets. Yeah, I mean those things have been worked out over time. Yeah, that has been. But then all, all the other ones like copyright controls, software, oh, they, they don't have the experience in the leaflet. Mm -hmm. They're gonna run out. Also, so just because they're festival, commercial, no, it's not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So mm -hmm. that is often works. No, that's eight A. It's 8A. Ooh, ooh, that's yeah. 8B. So under 8B, the question Unreachable owners posed is less than two dollars is right. Yeah. What should the minimum level of due diligence searches be? Are there any activities that you think should be mandatory and what can be optional? 8B or 8C? Right? 8B. I don't see there's no 8B yet then. Oh let me put in 8B, no problem. Okay. Easily done. Yeah, you put it into 8A, anything this one or 8C. Oh minimum level of due diligence. Number 19. Page 33. They should search at the copyright registry for free. There's a free one there. <laughs> <laughs> I think one one way to do the copyright registry for us is just keep it all in the blockchain. So so you take time to go to the blockchain, but they never verify uh, it there. But I reach one slide up. Okay. 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 Oh, it's at the back. No problem. So in uh, addressing this question, I uh, took a look at two of the. I looked at the US as well as the UK as well. Um, for the US, the threshold is diligent effort under the Often Works Act 2008. Uh, but that's been criticized as vague and unclear as to what potential users need to do to avoid infringement liability. It's also unclear what steps copyright owners need to take to protect their works from unlawful infringement. So the US doesn't give us much guidance on that particular case. The UK went completely the other way. Yeah. They've given lots of uh, guidelines and checklists of required searches for each category of work. They break it down to film, music, and sound, uh, one category, then literary works, and still visual art. So they've got huge flowcharts and, and checklists that uh, you know, potential users of open works would, are, are supposed to fill out and then submit to their UK intellectual property office. The criticism of that is that it's overly burdensome. There's a high number of diverse sources of information that need to be consulted. In the UK alone, if you want to look through the uh, database of literary works, apparently there are 200 different sources you need to go through. So it might be a little bit too hard. Um, so 
what I was thinking is that for Singapore, uh, what might be useful or might be what might be more practical would be a modification of the UK system, but incorporating a hierarchy of sources. So you maybe have a, a certain core group of sources that everybody's expected to look into first, and then maybe an optional um, list where you know you look in on a secondary basis. So it depends on the relevance, accessibility, and cost. Uh, some of the Google search. Google yeah. search, Bing search. <laughs> and, and there is also another... What? No, Alta Vista? Vista? <laughs> like us. And <laughs> <Okay. you know. laughs> there's also a uh, proposal that any sources which are not available for free online should be disregarded mm, yeah. to minimize cost burden to potential users. And then... <laughs> I mean, if, if IFOS takes this track, then what they can do is eventually just publish more guidelines and just first checklists page. and mm -hmm. fine tune them over time. These kind of checklists and all that would be not modifications of the, of the, the, the Copyright Act itself, but it would be some additional. No. Yes. 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 So, for example, what IFOS deems to be sufficient due diligence, maybe they've got a list of 10 things you have to check and submit your search reports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Copyright abuse. National Library. Okay. National Library. Are we all agreed on that? That it would be good to have a checklist? Do you take a vote on that? Checklist? Well, the, the if it's just Google search, it should be mandatory. Right? The book can depend on Google. Oh, everything. What can be optional? <laughs> no, look, here it says mandatory or optional. Mm -hmm. Mandatory, the only challenge with that would be if whatever you state there and disappears, mm -hmm. says Google dies or whatever, <laughs> then what happens if you explicitly state it there? No, no, you have to you have to freeze a copy. I mean, you have to at least get a screenshot. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's not there anymore. It's, I, I, mean, I think what Harish is saying is that Google is the entity Google that is providing, that is mentioned as a mandatory place to go and search, for example, yeah. is not there anymore. So Oh, but you can change the law. You can say that. Where, where, that's why, where would that thing be mentioned? It can be in a subsidiary legislation which can be changed can more change easily. Yeah. No, no, a subsidiary legislation will be easier to change. Okay. They can, you can change it as a, at the ministry level rather than having to pass it to parliament. Yeah, the rule of practice direction which yeah. is really easy to change. So there is a way. Okay, so we agreed all. So what's the wording for it? There should be a mandatory check, simple, free, free search checklist. List. Zero cost, zero cost. Zero cost search checklist. Which is listed in rules, subsidiary legislation, rules or regulations for easy updating. Okay. Oh, the need for optional because I'm not sure what value that has. Yeah, it just makes it more confusing, right? Yeah. If you have well, I think optional. Think, okay. Because I, I was just thinking a very simple model, it may be oversimplistic. That um, let's say a person wants to use a particular work, let's say a novel, and they try contacting the owner, the movie director, or the original director, could not find. So they they give notice and public notice, and the law provides that if you can give public notice or say, let's say a period of one year, for instance, mm -hmm. and no one turns up, then after that, you can continue to use the work without the fear of being infringed. I don't know. How is the public notice meant to be on a website? I mean, that can be worked out. It could be many sources. It has to be sufficiently like wide public notice. Mm -hmm. the then if you're the owner, the public notice is also Sorry. But if you're the owner of the work, that means you have an owner to go and check. Yes, so the burden is then on the owner. Uh, yes, in a way. But I think the problem is, if the if the owner cannot be found, the owner is probably not going to be able to check anyway, right? So I mean, the, the person the, is not. There is the intent here, right? I mean, they 
I am trying to put this yeah. information there so that I'm trying to do this. Yeah. In good faith, I'm trying to do this. If I can't find you, I can't find you. And if you don't look for it, then I can't, I can't help you as well. Oh, okay. So, so, so what is the, the demo really lies in how much effort you put in where it's where you put up the yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just what you're saying is as an alternative, if you want to do the mandatory simple zero cost search, then you do the mm. advertise for one year and wait. Right. Mm. Then you end up you have us being stuck for one year, you can't use the work. Yeah, so you want for us to do the search Yeah. Mm. yeah. Maybe two seconds to get the answer and it doesn't have to Okay, so optionally, no, alternatively, alternatively, publish it at a designated place. Yeah, it could be like wedding band, right? You're supposed to put wedding bands. It's uh, uh, so that if it's anybody nice. objects to these two being Before married, people right? People yeah. Yes. Lost and found. Lost and found. Sounds like they were good places, like lost and found department <laughs> in the copyright office. <laughs> 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 I'm not trying to change the report, but wouldn't 8A option to solve this problem? 8A? Mm -hmm. As in, if you already accept a payment up front, then mm -hmm. you wouldn't have this issue. 8A? Uh, where if I use an orphan work and I pay for it, I pay up front. So the onus on the government say to manage the amount to see. Mm -hmm. So then this this would it will negate this would be fine. Because if the uh, uh, owner comes out and makes a claim you just claim it from the bank. It's a user, yeah. I don't have to worry. The owner will work. say in the first place you show me your orphan work because I'm standing right beside you. <laughs> but we couldn't you find just, you. You No just but the problem is that the yeah. the work is not is not yet the uh, often yeah. work. This is to, to look at often uh, work. Because only after this process that it comes yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. okay, so unreachable owner is the next one. Yeah, so <coughs> the question here is if you try to get in touch with an owner but they are unresponsive, then what uh, should it also be included as treated as an orphan work? Uh, and then what would the appropriate duration be in order for the owner to be considered unreachable? So the assumption here is I know who owns it. You know who owns it. But in most cases, you know or anyway, right? In general, you face copyright. So you do know that. You probably know it, I just can't reach it. Can't reach it and, and cannot find the. Or they're unresponsive. You send email, but yeah, the word right. email is unreachable, not unresponsive. Yeah. So in the example they give here was uh, they know who it is, they tried contacting, they sent letters, mm -hmm. emails, but the person hasn't reached it. No response. No response. I suppose so unreachable. Mm -hmm. Reminds me with. I mean, it's a copyright. I get your request. I am I am under no obligation to email to be non-responsive no and 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 they're sort of turning it around like if I don't respond you then have the right to do it. Yeah. Obligation to respond. What what if mm. I understand this note to be spam? Mm. Then it goes to my junk folder. Mm. Then for for some reason like that, you know, it ends up mm -hmm. that my work is not compulsorily licensed under this feature. Mm. Mm. Or also your the work may be so popular you have three hundred requests a day. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it's incumbent on you. That's right. Or you may be coming. It's like a compulsory program. Maybe you decided to take a year off and you've gone yes. yeah, yeah. You know, to the Bahamas and you're not receiving mail and or you've gone to the Bahamas. Right? No problem. Yeah, it's both. Okay, so um, taking a vote. Mm.
How many in favor of? How should we phrase this? I like what you said about the issue of it becomes mandatory in that sense, right? It's, it's a must respond. Yeah. But I mean, what if someone sends it to me in a language that I don't even understand? No, exactly. So right? that's why or it spam. puts a burden on owner. Yeah. Mm. If we went so far, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we don't want unreachable. No, but the phrase, the word phrase unreachable as opposed to unresponsive. See, you say unreachable. I don't know whether I reach, reach you reach to or not, right? But the way they've written it, they mm. receive a response as a favorable answer. So, you know, they're kind of mixing the two up in your yeah. Okay, then we can actually phrase our own answer. Mm -hmm. Right? We don't have to, you know, if we have an alternative. It's able to receive a response. Will, will we agree that Lack we, we do mean? not, the, the owners should not be under a burden to respond? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that's what, that's what I hear. Mm -hmm. Owners should not be under a burden to respond or be reached. Yeah, but then if you take that advertisement option, yeah, then that's that then essentially what they're doing. Definitely. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's inconsistent. We never have, we don't need to be consistent. No, then that goes back to the first part as well, right? Labeling, right? Because now if you then you create orphan uh, registry, mm. and then the government decides to do what they want to do based on whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're again forcing the issue. Right? So actually, it's going to be for the answer for whatever you see in the ministry to the government. Yeah. Right, right now, you're yeah. Yeah. before you even get to find out the orphan work. So the question is, you as an author, are you even obliged to give a response? Mm. So the second sentence after owners should not be under a burden to respond should be. Lack of response should not make a work on often work. Is that right? <laughs> Please correct me if I'm wrong. Lack of response should not make a work often work. Should not oftenize the work. Lack of response <laughs> should not oftenize a work. <laughs> <laughs> should not make a work an often work. into an often work. So all so they're offering it and they're offering more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and open it. Yeah. Okay. So um here hey, but, wait, now now we have a consistency with our our advertisement yeah. suggestion. No, that was just yeah, a suggestion because we had another one. Yeah, so maybe some definition or some clarity needs to be established with regard to what's the definition of an orphan work. Yeah. That's and a starting point. That's a starting point. But so if there is an only no owner, then it cannot be an orphan work. Right? Because it says that there's been no yeah. owner. It's when you cannot identify who the owner is. That's in more. any case. Mm -hmm. So, so they know the owner, but they don't respond, then it's an illegitimate work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm often just not. Because it's, it's not an <laughs> owner, but you don't respond. Okay, it's often work equals a work where the owner is not, not known. Yes, it's not known. Okay, it's not known. Absent everyone. Unidentified. Absent owners. Absent owners. Thank you very much. Yeah, for the offer.